Today we're visiting with big game biologist Brett Weedman, and we're going to talk bighorns. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Brett, our bighorn population is probably the highest it's ever been since reintroduction in 1956. Yeah, that's correct, Mike. Uh, the last wild bighorn was confirmed killed in North Dakota in 1905. And when Theodore Roosevelt hunted bighorns in the late 1800s, just west of us here on Bullion Butte, where he killed his bighorn sheep, they were scarce at that time. He did not see many. Uh, they were then reintroduced in 1956. So our current population level between bighorns managed by the Game and Fish Department, National Park Service, and three affiliated tribes, uh, probably the most bighorns we've had for at least 150 years. So it's been a real successful restoration project. Okay, what is the population? Population right now, the Game and Fish manages around 330, probably about 40 in the north unit of Theodore Roosevelt National Park, and 50 to 60 in uh, population at Fort Berthold Indian Reservation. How did we get to this point, Brett? Well, it all began with uh, insightful department personnel back in 1954, where, who became interested in reintroducing bighorns. And what's interesting is bighorns have only been absent from North Dakota for about 50 years. Last one, 1905, was killed, and then they were uh, reintroduced in 1956. And it was kind of a challenge for about 40 years. They just, they didn't do real well, uh, pretty, anemic population growth. The real boost to our population was in 2006 and 2007. Our colleagues in Montana with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks were kind enough to give us bighorns from the breaks in Montana. We introduced those uh, group in 06, group in 07, and they have just done extremely well as far as adult survival. And the main thing is, is lamb recruitment. They just successfully raised so many lambs from those introductions and those populations. We've now translocated animals out of those, moving to other areas. So we kind of had that Montana genotype, phenotype throughout basically most of the northern badlands now. Uh, what is our goal for bighorns in North Dakota? Well, the population managed by Game and Fish Department right now are about 330 to 350. And what we've done is the limiting factor for the population is the amount of lambing habitat for ewes. They got to have that habitat to successfully raise their lambs. So. We basically identified all available lambing habitat. So ultimately we could get up to about 700, 750 bighorns, just that population managed by the department, if all of our habitat was occupied. We've had hurdles over the years, Brett. What were some of those hurdles? Well, disease is always a big one with bighorn sheep. Bighorns do extremely well in North Dakota. They can eat dried up, desiccated grass. They can, 35 below, they'll be up on top of a hill, you know, chewing their gut, perfectly comfortable. But the big thing is disease. We had a die off in the late 90s in the Southern Badlands, and then we had a more recent disease event in the Northern Badlands in 2014, which was not as severe. We lost maybe 15 to 20% of our adult population. I think they, for the most part, have, have recovered from that, although those pathogens are still there. But disease is always the number one challenge for bighorn sheep. And that's not only North Dakota, that's every state in the US, and that's even the Canadian provinces. And that's a pneumonia type disease. Right, it's called mycoplasma ovinomoniae and it causes pneumonia in uh, bighorn sheep. Usually causes pneumonia in bighorn sheep, but there are hundreds of different strains. So some are more virulent or deadly than, than others. And unfortunately, the, the strain we had in 2014 does not appear to be as deadly as some other states where they lost maybe 90% of a population. Brett, 2020, the hunting season was probably the best hunting season we've had in North Dakota for bighorn sheep. A lot of big rams. Yeah, you definitely want to draw a bighorn sheep tag in 2020. We hunters harvested the new number one, number two, and number five all-time rams in the state. First season was in 1975, and we've now harvested around 260 rams. And uh, yeah, just tremendous rams. And again, that goes back to that, those Montana genetics. They're just big bodied bighorn rams. And what's interesting is the rams were not that old. In fact, it was kind of the, collectively with the six rams that were harvested, it was the youngest age group in 26 years. So they were young rams, they're big. And, and fortunately for future hunters, we have a lot of real nice up and comers, a uh, lot of really big four to six year old rams out there right now. So yeah, it's, uh, it's only gonna get better, I think. Brett, you just finished your surveys, your summer surveys for bighorns. Why did we lower the, uh, the license numbers? We get, were five this year? Right, so last year, last year, yep, 2020, we issued six licenses. To, uh, 2021, we issued five. The same number of licenses in the north, we reduced one license in the south. Now the south, 
I counted around 15 total big horns, about five rams. So it's really not fair to send two hunters to chase five rams. They're actually trying to just depopulate the south due to that disease die off. And uh, what we're seeing when I do the survey, I really look at two things. I look at the number of rams and the age structure. And the number of rams up north is uh, pretty good about what it was in 2020. However, it's a young population. Like I said last year, you know, we did not shoot a ram eight years or older, which was the first time in 26 years. So we're just gonna kind of keep it the same, let these rams kind of come to maturity. And a small population for genetic variability, you really want these males to go through their entire breeding life cycle of their lives. So we typically want them harvested about eight to 10 years old. Uh, population north is way better than the population south, obviously. Yeah, so down south we have about 15 bighorns up north. You know, if you include all the populations, all of them, you know, it's it's over well over 400. So definitely doing better, better up north. And and the, our counts, I think we've had a record count, something like four years in a row up north. So there, the north is really carrying the weight right now. Brett, we also have an auction tag that we auction off every year for bighorns. Explain that. Right, so the department auctions one bighorn sheep license annually through the Midwest chapter of the Wild Sheep Foundation. And 100% of those revenues come back to the state to manage bighorn sheep. So last year, like we talked about how well and big these rams were, this year our auction license sold for a record $135,000. But that money is well used. That's for GPS collars, airplane time, gas from the pickup, all the, all the survey gear. So it, it really funds the program. So bighorns really fund their own management right now within the state. It's, it's not a drag on, on uh, state budget or anything like that. And that auction tag, just like all the other hunters, they get to go same areas and they yeah, don't so get they, any special treatment, I guess. Right, so the best. only advantage the auction hunter has is they can hunt in all open units where the lottery hunters, typically residents, got to hunt in a particular unit where, where, uh, where they're drawn or where they select after we run the lottery. Now there are some misconceptions that we do not tie the biggest ram in the state to a tree for the auction hunt. That was my next question. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, they, we, they get no favoritism, favoritism in that regard. In fact, the vast majority of hunting seasons, the largest rams are taken by resident hunters. So our residents are really good. You know, we got really good hunters in North Dakota and they find these nice rams. And last year in 2020, these three big rams we were talking about, all were taken by resident hunters who drew those tags. It's probably the most difficult tag to draw in North America as a North Dakota, North Dakota bighorn. Odds are, are real low. So, so yeah, the auction hunters, they, they, they're out there just like everyone else. Brett, let's switch gears here a little bit. You know, we've done interviews with a lot of the biologists this fall here and drought affects the bird species, you know, deer species. How does drought affect bighorn sheep? Drought does not affect bighorns all that much. They're well adapted to drought. They, a real advantage is they don't hide their young. Like when you, have, when you have a drought, let's say for meal, they're a pronghorn that hide their young and you have no grass, that residual grass on the landscape, predation is real heavy on those fawns. Bighorns give birth to a lamb within about three days. That lamb is up with mama running around. So it's really to their advantage in a drought year. And they're real, they can eat real desiccated grass, unlike mule deer that like a more high quality forage. So they're not too negatively impacted by, by drought. In fact, during, the, during our summer count, it was an all time record summer count of lambs that I counted 76 lambs. So obviously the lambs handled it real well. Did, you know, in, early in the year, we had a lot of fires out in Western North Dakota. Did the fires affect the bighorns at all? Actually, bighorns, just like drought, they love fire because the, you, know, you can see these juniper in the background, you know, biz, bighorn sheep like high visibility areas. Unfortunately for me, as a, the guy who manages bighorns, none of the fires in the grasslands really burn bighorn habitat where bighorns reside. We did get a real nice burn up where the tribal bighorns are, a uh, really big burn up there. And fire went through, got about an inch of rain, and all of a sudden this green grass comes up and all those bighorns up there are just gorging on that green grass up there. So uh, yeah, fire is a good thing for bighorns. They really, they really, uh, really like it. So overall in North Dakota, bighorns are doing great. Bighorns are doing great. We had a record uh, count in 2020 and then our survey is not complete till March and when we recount lambs, but if we get pretty decent lamb survival, we could break that record again in 2021. A lot of great information, Brett, thank you. Thank you.